What's up guys, it's TRT77 here with my week 3 game of season 5 of the TBA. Um, this week we play Big Papi and um, his team is on the screen in front of you. Uh, both our teams are 2-0 to start, which it's still early days in TBA right now. Quite a few teams have started off 2-0. Um, hopefully we get the dub this week. Uh, he has a team with Ash Karinja, which is quite bad for most of my team because... Uh, as you can see, once Kek goes down, I'm pretty prone to a, even a water shuriken sweep at some stage with enough chip. And he has mons to get that chip, like Klefki. He's got mons like Electros, which is extremely annoying for my team. Um, in front of you is the pace, the team that I'm bringing. I'm just bringing uh, Crowback with an Infiltrator set in case he brings sub Nero King, which can be annoying for me. But Brave Bird from this set will kill Nero King after it subs. Um, the other option is also that Crobat just gets Super Fangs on Electros, which would love to switch into it, or Toxic on it, which would be brilliant. Similarly, Toxic, so Super Fangs on Claydol, another bulky mon on his team. And overall, Clo uh, Crobat is just faster than everything on his team, and it's just useful to, to pivot around. Uh, Swamp Thing is making its season debut, uh, Basculin. It really puts in the number against this team. Uh, even Greninja is taking one third of its health from a choice ban adaptability flip turn. And overall, that thing has a really good matchup this week. And it was between Sneasel and Basculin because I couldn't bring both of them because they were too frail. But I, I'm pretty sure just flip turning around really helps us in this game. Uh, we got Sandman coming back. That is Sandaconda. Um, it's a sub glass head again. This time it's more so a counter to Klefki because we can just get up a sub on Klefki freely and then glare things provided uh, we have enough chip or provided he wants to preserve Klefki in the first place. Um, we have Assault Vest Kecleon which takes hits really well from all his special attackers to be honest. It takes hits well from Nido King, doesn't get two shot by Nido King in any universe. Um, kills Nido King with knockoff into Shadow Sneak. Um, kills Greninja with Drain Punch, kills, does more than 50 to most of his mons with knockoff, and Shadow Sneak is just a really good priority to have in there as well. Um, very standard Pessimian, uh, we just have Toxic instead of a fourth move just in case Claydol becomes a little annoying or such. I doubt I'm gonna click Toxic, but it, it's okay to just have it there in, in case Crobat goes down early and I don't have a way of breaking through Eel easily. Uh, Mega Ladias is um, 3 attacks recover. This Mega Ladias set is kind of nuts because we do not get one shot by Battle Bond, Choice Specs, Modest, Greninja with Dark Pulse. So even if he gets his Battle Bond form up, we can take a hit at Energy Ball. If he's not in his Battle Bond form, I doubt he's living in Energy Ball. But I think I'd have to run that calc again depending on his bulk. So now we're just gonna jump into the game, guys. Now jumping into the game, guys. Um, as you can see, uh, he brought a pretty threatening team. It's pretty much gone all offensive. No Electros makes me so happy at this point. And um, we lead off with Crobat, should outspeed most of his team, and he leads Braviary. Now here, I'm just gonna U-turn out. We'll know if he scarfed, if he outspeeds us, and if he brave birds, or uh, depending on what, what move he's gonna click here. Uh, we just U-turn out with faster, and uh, he clicks Rock Slide. So this tells me he's 100% Shear Force, because I don't think Braviary is usually run non Shear Force Rock Slides, unless, unless I'm mistaken. But um, this means he could be Life Orb, but that damage doesn't suggest Life Orb. That damage does suggest Adamant, but um, not quite Choice Band damage or Life Orb damage. Um, the reason it did 10 is because, you know, we have, as we saw in the paste earlier, uh, Santa Khan is fully specially defensive here. Um, here, he is going to go into Claydol. Uh, I do just click the sub here, uh, fully hoping that he was going to go um, into either Gallade or Delphox. So one of the mons that I knew that would probably just come in and threaten me out instantly. Um, here, I'm going to make the hard switch, thinking he's going to set up rocks and go into Basculin, but he does just click Psychic, and uh, that would not have broken sub, so I should have probably stayed in there and just stayed behind the sub. 
Uh, here we have the Fierce Flip Turn, as we mentioned earlier, his team does not deal with it and we just do a butt ton of damage to Klefki. Go right back into Sandakanda here and um, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna hit this thing. And he does do about, we, we almost kill, but I think that was a low roll. I have to double check that with the spread because if he was Fizz Def, that wasn't a low roll, but otherwise that was definitely a low roll. Uh, but here, he's gonna get a spike up, which is something I did not want at all, but either way, we pick up the kill on Klefki and Sandakana gets on the board for the season. Now, um, here he's gonna go into Gren. I'm gonna double into Kecleon here because I just don't wanna, not double, but switch into Kecleon. As you see, it does absolutely nothing, which gonna knock, and we managed to get a lot of damage off and Galaid here. We get rid of its item, which is a life orb. And he goes into Bird Gang, which is a good switch because we were always going to Shadow Sneak there to take out Glade. But here, uh, maybe we should have double knocked here. That would have probably been a better play, knowing that he would have not wanted to give up Glade so quickly. But I just feel like, because the, I feel like the only reason he's brought Glade to this game is because it has Shadow Sneak. Like, that's pretty much his one reason to bring Glade this game is because he does not have a whole lot of priority on this team outside of Prankster, Klefki to really affect my Galadias. And um, so we're gonna have to switch here because I've already let Kek get whittled down and I don't want it to take more damage. We're just gonna go back into Sandakanda and he clicks Brave Bird and he's clearly adamant based on that damage, but we still don't get the Shed Skin. I think we've legitimately gotten one Shed Skin turn the whole season, but it's all good. At this point, it wasn't gonna make much of a difference. I was gonna sack Sandakanda here anyway. Uh, so we're here at 5-5, five, five. he has Bird Gang out, and I'm just gonna go into Blasculin. I'm pretty sure he's adamant we do outspeed. And Basculin, I click Liquidation here where I should have probably clicked Flip Turn because now I have given him that much momentum back, and he goes into Greninja. I go back into Kek here, and he reveals Dark Pulse, which is clearly 100% specs damage. That's 100% specs damage and um, a bit annoying to deal with, I'm not gonna lie, because I just don't wanna give him the battle bond here, so I'm just gonna go into Crobat. I know we outspeed with Crobat, so we can just freely U-turn out, and we U-turn out on the clay doll. And back into Basculin we go. Once again, flip turn is the easiest play in the game, and we take out clay doll. So Basculin has put in the work already early here, picking up two solid KOs on clay doll and Glade. Uh, but here we're just gonna go into Pessimian. We're in a good position. We have nothing to lose by going Pessimian. I am going to go into Kecleon here on the double just to scout if he is Scarf Psychic. The Scarf Psychic will cost us Pessimian here. And since we died as Spike, we'll know what he's locked into if he's Scarf. And he clicks Shadow Ball. I see no reason to click anything else. And I click Earthquake here and we don't kill, which is honestly really surprising because unless he had a lot of hp that was pretty much i i'm pretty sure that was a roll heavily in my favor and this had to be a min roll at this point i think 92 to 108 would have been the roll if he had a certain amount of hp which i know in poppy he might have had the hp investment but uh he's gonna click shadow ball here um here i don't want to just let Braviary in for free, so I go into Crobat. We should outspeed because we were faster with Pessimian. And he clicks Shadow Ball here. And he clicks Shadow Ball again and reveals he's Scarf. He is a modest Scarf. Um, he is a modest Scarf variant of Delphox. And he's going to take out Crobat here. So now we're back down to 3 3. Here, I'm just going to go into Pessimian. I have the easiest play in the book in clicking U turn and taking out. Delphox, but Delphox did some damage there because now we've lost our Mon that's faster than, that's naturally faster than, than Greninja without the Scarf. And now I'm just gonna go into Mega Ladias here. Uh, I, I don't see a way we lose this right now irrespective of, uh, unless, unless we do get hacks out, but we can always see what happens. And here he goes for the Dark Pulse and he flinches. I just want to point out I, in real life, I did say, I don't see a way I lose this right now. It was famous last words. <sighs> now, I cannot, I, I, I can't be, uh, I like, 
yes, um, it's Pokemon, it's hacks, it's what happens, you know, it is RNG. It's a game with RNG, but this really tilted me. This, I'm not gonna lie and pretend like, you know, it's all, it, it is like, it is a game. I can't be angry with him. This is, this is literally P Pokemon. This is how it works. But this is so enraging for me in the moment because all I had to do here was click energy ball. We had HP investment. I then sack for Simeon. And then I go into Basculin, click Aqua Jet three times and win the game. Or two times and win the game. Actually, technically it's two times. Aqua Jet did kill Bird Gang. Or worst case, if he didn't have HP investment, even irrespective, I could have just sack Lati, gone Basculin, then gone for Simeon. Irrespective, all gone per Simeon, then gone Basculin. Most likely, I could have just sacked Lati, gone per Simeon, gone Basculin. There were so many ways, but at the end of the day, it was just really frustrating to get flinched here like this. Um, because now I have to c account for Water Shuriken, because now I know he's going to get his Battle Bond form. Whereas before this, we could have prevented him or he would have got his Battle Bond form with no HP left. So here, I'm gonna have to sack Basculin and he does get his Battleborn form off, and this is really tough. But we're just gonna go into Persimian here. I just click close combat, irrespective. I don't have any other players left in the book right now. I have nothing left in the back. I just go for the close combat, and Persimian is gonna take out Greninja here. And uh, we're back down to 2 1. Depends, it comes down to his Braviary spread. My calc says this dies because uh, I'm pretty sure my calc had this at something like um, give or take uh, I have to double check this later but give or take this was this was always a guaranteed KO pretty much I'm pretty sure this was at least 81.3 percent we go for the close combat and we do 61 which tells me he has invest either he's max HP or he has a ton of defense investment or we min rolled or both and he's gonna click u-turn and take us out which tells me he's choice scarf which tells me he's going to kill that here. so we're gonna drop this game oh one ggs to papi he did prep really well and post game in the pace i saw his 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 braviary did have 100 defense which made the roll uh, i think the roll was around 61 to 73 something like that but we got the min roll on that as well which was really frustrating uh, because if we didn't low roll, if we uh, we would have obviously needed like a mid high roll, or almost a high roll to kill at 69. But if we didn't low roll on Delphox, we would have still had Crobat alive, and Crobat would have 100% clean the game up. Or if we didn't, uh, it is if we didn't get flinched on Mega Ladias, it is it is what it is. This is Pokemon. This is like this game comes part and parcel with RNG, and I was upset. That's kind of why I delayed recording this game a little bit is because I just wanted to cool down after the game. But GG's to Papi. I think I can't take anything away from him. The lad prepped really well. And, you know, they say you 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 make hay when the sun shines. And he took the opportunity given to him by that flinch and he, he iced it. Few other players would not have iced it because a lesser player would have gone, switched out into Braviary and given me Braviary and, and then lost 1v1 with Gren versus Pissimian. He did not choke, he played his win con and he did it well. And uh, so props to him for that. So my my uploads are still gonna be a little spaced out guys because I'm just a little bit more busy now IRL. Uh, my battle tag video should go up this week. I was tagged by Rick, shout out Rick and Eli as well. Um, hopefully the battle tag video should come out soon. Um, my BDL game against Papi has already been played, but again, I'm just going to delay recording it a bit because I just do not have the time this week. Um, and hopefully these uploads should go up by the weekend. And this week's uploads will probably, this week's games will probably be a little bit delayed in both leagues uh, because I'm playing replacement coaches in both leagues. So I'm not sure when exactly I'm going to be able to play the games and then get them up. So. This is me signing off, guys. Uh, I hope y'all have had a great evening. I hope y'all have a great day, if that's your time zone right now. Um, let's just hope this year gets better, and I hope everyone stays safe till we all get vaccinated, and then hopefully life gets back to normal. This is TRT77, signing off.